Hey folks, how's it going? I got uh, a set of questions from a friend of mine on Instagram and I figured I would um, solve them. Uh, if you're new to our channel, please uh, like and subscribe and share and comment. And um, uh, send us send us your questions via email or through Instagram. You know, if you have like, a, like this student gave me her, her questions through like an image that she, she, you know, she just simply took a picture of her assignment and, um, you know, I can answer the questions via video on, uh, on here. So that's, that's what, uh, we do here and, uh, we sure, sure do appreciate your support. So, okay. Uh, the first question, I don't know if you can really read that, but it's saying a ball is thrown upward from a height of 64 feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Determine when and with what speed uh, the ball hits the ground. So it wants a time, okay, and the speed at which it hits the ground. All right, now, um, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with uh, the physics of, of this, uh, this topic. So you've got a ball, right, and it's being thrown off of a height, right? That is a very slanted building, okay? Um, anyway, so we've got um, a height, and the height was, again, it was 64 feet, okay. And it's actually being thrown with an initial velocity up, so it's actually doing this for its trajectory, right? Um, it's starting with an initial velocity, right, of 128 feet per second, I believe. 128 feet per second, yes. Okay, now... Um, with this sort of situation, uh, the acceleration here is caused, it's constant and it's caused solely by gravity, okay? So the acceleration here is, um, is negative um, 32.174 feet per second squared. Now notice I said negative 32 uh, because that negative sim symbolizes down, right? Gravity in physics is always down, so that's why we put a negative there. So that's the downward direction. Therefore, this upward velocity will have a positive, it won't be a negative. Now, the, uh, the downward displacement, it starts off here at the very top of the building and it will end up here, right? So we say that the displacement is negative 64 feet. Right, so it's gonna have this form. This is the equation that we have to deal with. It's one of these kinematic equations. Um, so the displacement is equal to an initial velocity times time plus half the acceleration times time squared. Okay, now, so uh, again, displacement is negative 64 feet, right? Because it ends up uh, in the downward direction, the start off here and it ends up this way. So the displacement is down uh, by negative 64 feet uh, and uh, the initial velocity is 128, okay, positive. Times time, we don't know what time is, we have to solve for time. Um, and then plus half of this negative 32.174 T squared. So we need to figure out what half of um, of 32.174 is so you just pull out a handy dandy calculator thank you uh, gallium OS so 32.174 divided by 2 we get 16.087 okay and I'm gonna bring this guy over okay I'm gonna do that so I'm going to get negative 16.087 t squared plus 128t plus 64, okay? And I'm gonna have nothing left on the left side, so I get zero. All I have to do is solve this quadratic equation in t. And look, these numbers are obviously awkward, so you can't really factor, um, or you can, but you're just gonna have a huge headache. Um, so instead, we're gonna use a quadratic formula, okay? So I'm not gonna actually you know, do the quadratic formula here, um, I'm just going to look at the result. Uh, this is grade 12 calculus. Hopefully it should be okay by then. Um, so let's see. Uh, all I have to do is punch in these values. That's it. So um, I need my constants A, B, and C. So I'm going to write out what those are at least. Uh, so let's see. A in this case is the, con the coefficient in front of T squared. It's negative 16.087. Okay. 
my B is equal to 128 positive, right? And C is a positive 64. So I'm going to punch these guys in, uh, not into the calculator, but into the solver. Okay, and you can use this site. It's very helpful. Just literally go into Google and type in, um, type in, you know, quadratic formula solver, and it'll. It's probably like the first link, right? So negative 16.87. I'm losing myself here. Um, 128 and 64, right? Yes. Okay. And you hit solve, and you get your two times. Very easy very easy so you get your two times so my two times are so t equals either negative let's see uh, negative 0 0.472 seconds or or okay um, 8.429 okay now here's the thing um, it's not going to be negative 0 0.4272 because you can't have negative time, right? So this must be the time. And we've solved the first part of the problem, right? It says determine when. Now we need the speed at which it hits the ground. Okay, so again, we're going to use a kinematic equation. The kinematic equation says that the final velocity, okay, uh, in a trajectory, so in this case, the context is the final velocity is just before it hits the ground, the initial velocity is this velocity going up, and I've got my acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 32.174, and now I found my time. Okay, I found my time. So I can use that to solve for my answer. So the, it's gonna be the initial velocity plus uh, A, the acceleration, times time. That simple. So it's gonna be 128 minus um, the minus is there because of the acceleration taking on negative 16. Um, oh, sorry, that's not 16. 32.174, right? Don't mess up this A with the acceleration. This is the coefficient in the quadratic formula. Anyway, we get that times 8.429. Um, now use our calculator, okay? And we got to uh, find the answer. So it's going to be 32.174. 174 okay times 8.429 and we get that and I'm just going to take away 128 and I'm to put a minus sign so it's going to be minus 143.2 minus 143.2 okay Fe uh, feet uh, per second and this negative is there because of the velocity right it's a velocity it's a downward velocity because it's on its way down. To get the speed, which is what they want, right, you have to take the absolute value of it. So it'd be 143.2 feet per second, and that's that, okay? So that's that question. That's basically 10. Uh, you needed to kind of know some physics, right? You need to know how to get that equation. Uh, for me, as a calculus, if I were in calculus for grade 12 and I never took physics, it wouldn't be that, it would not be that apparent to me. Uh, so okay, so number eleven. Um, this was this was interesting. Um, let's see, is it is it working? No. Okay. So this was kind of interesting. Uh, this problem tells you the following. It says the acceleration of a car as soon as it hits the brakes varies with time. It's negative six t minus four. Okay, and that's in feet per second squared. All right. Uh, and if the car was moving initially at a speed, right? So, so like right when it hits the brakes, time is zero, right? Right when it hits the brakes, time is zero. That speed is 32 feet per second. It wants to know how far uh, you go before coming to a stop. How far does the car travel before coming to a stop? What you have to do is you have to take this guy and perform uh, an operation and find the antiderivative. Now, what that is, is a function such that if I were to take the derivative of it, I would get acceleration back. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. The antiderivative of acceleration is velocity, okay? And I need a function here such that if I were to take its derivative, I would get this sucker right here. Now, that function is the following, minus 3t squared 
minus 4t plus some initial velocity, okay? Plus some constant, okay? Um, and I'm, I said that was the initial velocity, and you'll see why, okay? If you plug in, and notice, notice, before I even move forward, if I take a derivative of this, I get back my acceleration. So this is the correct antiderivative. Um, now, here's the thing. If I plug in zero for time, right, I know my answer should be 32 according to the question. That was what's provided. This guy's gonna go away, this guy's gonna go away, and I'm just gonna be left with v-naught. So what I did was I found what my, my v-naught is. You have to put a constant, notice that. Because if you didn't put a constant, right, if you just put zero, I mean, it wouldn't be wrong, but it wouldn't necessarily be completely true because it tells you that the initial speed is 32 feet per second. So you need to introduce some like constant to determine what that, con to um, uh, provide for that condition, right? So, so keep that in mind. So V of T is going to be negative three T squared minus four T plus 32. All right, now you have to, that you have to find the answer for, uh, you know, how far does it travel before coming to a stop? All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another antiderivative. Okay. And by this time, you're probably like, oh my gosh, kill me now. But it, I'm going to do an antiderivative for displacement or, uh, you know, distance, if you will. Um, so the antiderivative would be, let's see, um, uh, net minus t cubed minus 2t squared plus 32t plus some initial position, okay, where you start off. Um, now, what you can do is you can arbitrarily set d, d naught to zero, okay? So you can say that I initially start at some zero position and I just wanna know where I end up and that answer would be your distance, right? Like how far you are. So all I'm do is I'm gonna set that to zero. Okay, so my d of t is minus t cubed minus 2t squared plus 32t, and that's d of t. Now notice, I still need a time, right? I don't know what the heck time is. I need the time in which I stop. The thing is, what's the time, uh, what does stopping mean? That means my speed, right, my speed equation has to be zero. Okay, so I'm gonna find that time and then I'm gonna plug it back into d of t and I get my answer. So minus three t squared minus four t plus 32 equals zero, right? So I'm solving the, the, the time that makes v of t equal to zero. Now I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative one. So I'm gonna change all the signs and I get that. Now this is factorable, okay? I want you to try it yourself. This is totally factorable. Um, so let's see, uh, I believe it's going to be um, plus four here, uh, minus uh, eight here, okay? So let's see, three t squared minus eight t plus 12 t, that's plus four t minus 32. This is totally fine. So this guy cannot be a, a solution of my quadratic equation, because I know that t can't be negative, right? And t would be negative four in that case, so that's no good. So t has to be eight over three, okay? So what I do is I just plug in eight over three. What am I doing? D of eight thirds, okay? And I go negative, you know, eight over three cubed minus two times, um, uh, eight over three squared uh, plus 32 times eight over three. And then I just gotta work out my solution and I get my answer, right? So it's gonna be, let's let's do this. Um, oh, go, oh, oh gosh. Okay, so eight over three uh, squared, okay. And then I'm gonna multiply by 2.6667, right? I'm just cheating a little bit. So that, that's the cubed, right, term. So I get 18 point, so negative, you know, 18 point uh, uh, 963, okay? And then uh, the second part is 
you know, 7.11, so 8 over 3 squared I found to be 7.11111, right? So it's going to be 7.11111, whatever, times 2. So the second term is going to be minus 14.222, okay? Um, and then I'm going to add on to that 32 times 8 divided by 3, add on 85.333. Okay, and I'm happy because I'm definitely going to get a positive, and that is making sense. So good, right? So I'm going to take away from that 14.222, and I'm going to take away from that 18.963. And I end up getting 52.148, and it was in feet, I believe, and that is my final answer. Thank you so much. Please support us uh, in this calling that we're doing here. Um, support us by you know subscribing, liking our page, um, and visiting our website, uh, lehightutoring.com. We really appreciate your support. Have a good one, and have a nice day. Bye.